Do you know the difference between a regular write check and a payroll liabilities check? Hmm, what's the difference? This actually was a question that came up on a training call that I was doing yesterday, and I thought this might be something you're curious about too. I put it on my social media where he's like, I don't know the difference. So let's talk about it. If we've never met before, hi, I'm Candace Camper, the creator of Confidence with QuickBooks and QuickBooks and Fun. And this channel is all about how to keep QuickBooks simple while giving you the tips and tricks you need to take your QuickBooks knowledge to the next level. So what is a payroll liability check versus a regular check? When you're processing payroll through QuickBooks and you are taking out payroll taxes, child support, AFLAC, any of those things, those are called liabilities, right? They're money you are withholding from your employee's check, but you are gonna pay it for them. You don't wanna write those if you're processing your payroll directly through QuickBooks as a regular write check. So come look over my shoulder and I will show you what to do inside of QuickBooks. So let's jump into QuickBooks and I'm gonna show you what the difference is, okay? So yesterday the question came up about child support specifically and they were saying, why does when I write a check, it's not actually taking care of my child support? What am I doing wrong? Or Affleck, both of those came up. So let's talk about it. The way QuickBooks works is when you're processing payroll in this area, you can go in and you can pull a report under employees and payroll payroll liability balances. This is one of the ways I teach to check and make sure that you're paying the right amount on your liabilities. If you're not using what we call a liability check to pay it, it will never reduce these dollar amounts because it's just how the software is designed. So if you are processing payroll directly through QuickBooks, if you go here and you use write checks, and even if you pick the correct account here, it will reduce what's called your chart of accounts. Okay, so it'll come in here and you'll go down and you'll see that this amount may not match that other report. And the reason is, is because you're not using the software the way it was designed. The way it's meant to work is to go over here and click pay liabilities. And then it will set up your different pay schedule depending on how you set your QuickBooks up to pay your different ones. Now these are, it's my training file, so you may see these red marks. They aren't supposed to be there if you're using your QuickBooks on a consistent basis. So these are all samples that I've done from trainings that I did. So you can either pay them through here and you check mark it and pay, or one of my favorite things that most people don't know about is to come down to the bottom down here and click on create a custom payment. The benefit of this that I was teaching yesterday is um, the person who's asking a question had Aflac and they were wanting to pay all of it at one time versus having it set up separately. So in here, whether you're paying the state, whether you're paying child support, whatever it is, if you want it to all be paid at one time, you can select them. And as long as the vendor or the payable is the same name, it will do one check through QuickBooks. You come in here, just like you normally would, you pick the time frame that you want, you would pick which account, you would pick how you, what date you're paying it, all of those details, okay? But when you pay it either through this screen or up here at the top, that's a liability. That's why it says pay liabilities up here at the top. So that's exactly how you want to be doing it to make sure that you're paying it accurately so that all your other reports are done right. Now, one of the other behind the scene things that I was teaching yesterday that I want to share with you is how do you make sure that your payroll items are even set up properly so they're going to the right liability account to begin with? Which was something that came up. So you're going to want to go under list, payroll items list, scroll down. You can look at every one of your accounts. Specifically, if you're using child support, you want to double click. This is the name that shows up on the payroll for your employee. This is who you're going to pay. So this is the vendor. So you want to come here and find the correct vendor. You would put in the account number that you're paying, the agency, the reference number. And then this is where you choose which of your liability accounts that you've split set up. Now, one of the things I teach inside my programs is that when you're doing payroll liabilities, it's best if you have every one of the different types of accounts set up separate so that when you're verifying that liability report, you can go into your chart of accounts so that if you ever get off, you can go back and figure out why it's off versus trying to do a lump sum of all the different types of liabilities that you have. Remember, liabilities is gonna be taxes, child support, any of the things you're taking out of your employees' checks that you owe for them or you owe as a business, right? So it's a liability is 
things that you're taking that you owe on behalf of someone else, just like sales tax. You collect it on behalf of the state or the county, however yours works, and then you pay it for them. The same is true for payroll taxes specifically. So you come in here and I typically recommend setting up different ones. If this has been going to payroll liabilities, which was the example we were looking at yesterday, if you choose to set up a new account and say go to child support for better tracking, after you go through all this that you've selected and if you have any questions on any of those prior screens, I recommend taking, checking with your tax professional. You click finish. If you changed anything, a little screen will pop up and it'll say, do you want to change anything from before or not? And if that's what you need, you can make a decision. You can either do it based off of a certain date. You can do all transactions or make no changes at all. All right. So let me know below. Did this help you? Are you going to go in where your liability checks not being done accurately? If you've been doing it in the past, which is a common question that comes up, typically what I recommend doing is going in. It's a There's a little process to it. Voiding the prior checks and reissuing them as liability checks. There's a couple other strategies you can do to clean up as well, but that is one of them. The thing to know is if you've been reconciling and you void a check, when you go to re-enter it, you do what I call a cleanup reconciliation, which is just using the current time frame. You don't have to unreconcile and move forward. That is actually something that I teach in quite inside of QuickBooks Simplified. If you're needing more support with those types of cleanup, make sure to go to QuickBooks Simplified and check that out. Let me know if you know the difference now between a liability check and a right check or a check register and why I don't recommend them for payroll taxes when processed straight through QuickBooks. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We totally appreciate it. It helps us reach more people. And if you want to get notified for our next tip and trick, don't forget to hit the bell. Or if you'd like to receive them straight in your inbox, go up above or down below and I'll send them to you. Thank you so much for being part of my community. And I look forward to seeing you inside our next tip and trick. Have an awesome day. Bye.